It's great to be here, isn't it, this morning? So welcome to the house of the Lord this morning, raised up for the glory of God. And um, may you experience grace and peace today as we worship together. I especially welcome everybody, especially the visitors amongst us, and um, also those that join us on YouTube. And especially a welcome to our speaker this morning, Rocco. Rocco Calamir, our local elder, he's to deliver our ser service today. And just a reminder that after the service we have a fellowship lunch and we're all invited to partake of the food and also the fellowship together. We have quite a few of announcements today. The first few are about next week. Because next week's a special, the offering for taken up in the church service is... Um, for the ADRA Community uh, Projects offering. That's on the 5th of October. And it's in partnership with local churches that uh, these projects are run, where we help to feed and to clothe and to uh, connect with and empower people who would uh, otherwise just fall through the cracks and uh, not get assistance. And um, when you give an offering, you support this work to be able to uh, love our neighbours and to give them actual physical support and so that's next week, just to keep in mind that. And also, today's lesson was the end of uh, the quarter. So next week, we start a new quarter with our Sabbath school lessons. And um, just a reminder that first, the first class will be studying the, the normal uh, lesson, the themes in the Gospel of John. We've just done Mark, and now we're doing John. And so that should be interesting. And but the second the class uh, down the corridor, they'll be sipping in discipleship, which comes from an old quarterly. Um, October and November is going to be a, a busy month, but uh, medical missionary training is um, being on um, at Adventist Alpine Village between 17th and the 24th of November. And that, if you remember, earlier on in the year we had Kay uh, Sem come here and give us. Um, a weekend of um, training in that regard and if you'd like to do that um, the details are on the outside there or you come and see me and we can give you a, an update on that if you'd like to attend. Also in November for those that do homeschooling there's the, um, uh, the South New South Wales Conference Homeschool uh, Camp and that's on the 7th to the 10th of November. And once again, that's at the Adventist Alpine Village. And it's for six to 14 year olds, which is a great school, school, homeschoolers. And the only thing I notice here is that you need to make a decision before this coming Thursday, the 3rd of October, to, to attend. The librarians have also given me a, a notice there. You may have all already gone through the library, but they've got a sign up there, free books and DVDs. And um, there's interesting topics there for today. And uh, if anyone was interested, take a browse through the, uh, the library there and uh, the books are there free. You know, and they tell me it's available for the next uh, couple of Sabbaths, okay? So um, that's there. Now, the next thing is that for October and November, we have um, the church's planned outreach activities. Um, and these outreach programs are for the community, for your friends, for your neighbours and acquaintances. And the first one that comes up is the Health Outreach Seminar. And that's on a Sunday. These are both, there's two of those coming, two Sundays. One is the 20th of October. And then the second one will be on the 24th of November, a month, basically a month later. And I'll be go from 2 to 4 p.m. at the church here. And uh, there'll be a health lecture and cooking demonstration and food tasting. And that's to be led out by Sel Selena Reno. And it's to be here at the church, okay? And um, to help you along the way, there's going to be flyers. And they'll be here available. So you can take some and deliver them out um, door to door or to your friends and your neighbours, your acquaintances, just give them one and you can explain what will happen and that'll be, that'll be good. And then uh, on the 10th of November, 
we have planned a picnic day. Uh, that's the Sunday again on the 10th of November at 11.30 here at the church. And we need just to come and have fellowship and bring you picnic, some picnic food and games. And once again, it's there for everyone to invite their friends and or your friends, your neighbours, anybody that you think can come and enjoy the fellowship together. And on the 23rd of November, there is a visitor's day. So we hope that the whole of the church would be full with all your friends and acquaintances and community members. That's the Sabbath, the 23rd of November. And once again, there will be the service, especially for the visitors, and a potluck lunch again. So once again, you can, that's another thing you can invite people to, to have some food with us. So for these outreach programs, think of what you can do. And you know, you can start now. Yes, now. For these outreach programs. Because you can start praying for the names of friends and acquaintances that you can ask. And you can ask for the Holy Spirit to move on the people that you give them an invitation to. And you can pray for Pastor Yvonne Renault and Selena Renault as they lead out in these programs. And um, for my thing, I need to pray for courage to be able to invite people. The Holy Spirit can give you that courage. And I think as a whole church, we need to think about it and together we can be loving, we can be welcoming and friendly when people actually come. And it's not just some one or two, it's all of us need to be able to embrace people who are coming and inquiring. So let's start now. Let's start praying for these outreach programs. That's all the announcements I have for you today, I think. Sorry to take so long, but I think they're important to know. We can read them in the bulletin, but I think we need to say, OK, what can I do? And a little bit long, I'm sure there'll be some of the things come out that'll tell us not only can we just pray, but there'll be physical things that we can help in preparing for these programs. Let's uh, sing our invocation hymn as we start our worship service, 668, O Thou Who Hearest. Thank you. Dear Lord, as we gather here today, we'd like to invite your spirit to comfort us, to reassure us, Lord, to lead us through this new week that is coming up, Lord, to teach us and to most importantly change our hearts as we surrender ourselves. And please, Lord, open our hearts and minds that we may listen to your words. We worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. We have the privilege now of singing our, our first hymn. Open our eyes, Lord, that I may see. Hymn 326. Thank you.
has now come time for our offering and today it is for local budget and I've asked the deacons if they'd come forward and collect it for us. Thank you. In Psalms 95, 6 and 7, it says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God. I'd invite you, if you are able, to kneel in prayer this morning. Very kind and loving Heavenly Father, we are the people that you watch over. We are your flock that you care for. Help us to listen to you. Listen to your voice today and forever. And we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you all that you made the plan of salvation even before the establishment of the world and that you gave your son Jesus to die for us in our stead, that we may have life, eternal life. And we take hold of the precious promises that you will come again, and that you're coming, and we see from the, your word that you're coming soon. Thank you for this hope, Lord. Lord, we pray especially for the upcoming outreach programs, that uh, we all be able to talk to our friends, our neighbours and our acquaintances to invite them along, be with those that are going to lead out. Help us to kindle in our hearts the loving kindness that you have for us, that when we meet people that we'll be able to show them through your Holy Spirit and through your power that you love them. Lord, we pray for those that are sick amongst us and we pray and think of Estelle who's had a nasty fall and is uh, recovering now. Also thank you Lord that he is back with us today and we think of Lorraine McLean Lord who's had a knee operation and that's recovering especially with them and others that uh, have ailments that uh, that need uh, to be cured Lord. And we do, I pray especially for today's message we pray for Rocco as he delivers the message you've uh, given to him to bring to us and may we have open minds and hearts today. And we also pray, Lord, for the offering that has been collected that it will be able to go forward to this community, taking your word, your gospel and the benefits of salvation to this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No, I believe there's going to be some special music. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for using your talents to uplift us this morning. And uh, we look forward to hearing some more. And now we have a scripture reading. Anita is going to bring us the scripture reading this morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today I'm going to read from Luke chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Then his disciples, then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but the rest of it it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Thank you, Anita. Very nice. Now we have time to sing our next hymn, 322, Nothing Between. for assisting today and uh, for your welcome and for announcing all the announcements. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody as well to this uh, service today, especially with the young children. It's uh, nice to see young people in church and especially with those who have uh, taken part today, Nathan and Joss and uh, Anita. Thank you for all the talents that you have uh, fine tuning and preparing your your hearts and minds in serving the Lord. We thank you for that. Also, uh, thank you for all the uh, people who uh, made service possible today. To those of you who did Sabbath school in teaching, the young ones and the old ones, 
Thank you for that, and also for the musicians who are with us today, who's, um, without we cannot worship, uh, that is acceptable. We thank you for that as well, and the AV team, and not forgetting uh, the cleaners who clean the church and those who are clean outside as well. Thank you for your services. Now today, as you can see on the screen, I'll be talking about uh, parables, how Jesus um, taught parables and what his reasons were in, uh, for in parables. And by the way, Adam, I'd just like to thank you as well for your messages you've been sending us and uh, saying happy Sabbath. It's really encouraging just to look forward to the Sabbath. As we know, um, Jesus is coming back uh, in just a few Sabbaths away. You look at it in terms of Sabbaths. And thank you, Adam, for encouraging messages that you keep on sending us uh, from last week. It's really encouraging. Seeing that they might not see hearing that they might not understand. It's taken from uh, the book of Luke 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 9 to 10, when his disciples asked him what the parables meant, and he said unto them, as Anita read, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now, what is parables for? Jesus used parables to teach the lessons of life closer to the hearts of hearers as they live their daily lives daily. In those days, it was more of an agricultural uh, setting in the background so that they could have a better understanding in what Jesus was trying to reach their hearts with. The intention of uh, changing the prejudice that existed in those days, the bias they had, shining his light of his life into their darkened hearts to be able to discern the true meaning of his words. And I suppose that is one of the reasons why we come to church. We just don't come just to listen to the sermons and then go back home, but we try and understand and read for ourselves what the Bible is telling us, especially in the days that we are living in. So Jesus used creatures animals and people. He used creation and the backdrop, trees and the waters. And the purposes can be found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 17, where I'll be picking up a parable from there. It's all about parables in Matthew chapter 13. Some, some of the purposes in um, Jesus giving parables was to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. As you can see, some of the parables, most of the parables in this Matthew chapter 13 was likening the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed or to something else that we'll, we'll be reading further. Whosoever will be given more will be given and added, but those who don't have whatever you may have will be taken away as well. So these are all lessons that we need to uh, contemplate as, as we read God's word, as we listen to what he has to say for us today. So in other words, uh, these parables are trying to teach us that only those who are sincere seekers, seeking after the word sincerely to understand and obey will see, uh, will see, hear, and comprehend. And he continues to say in verse 13 that um, seeing not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand in the book of um, Luke chapter 8, and verse 14 onward says, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, seeing you shall see, but you shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Eyes have closed. Lest they say that they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For very less unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. So this was messages for those who were ignorant, who couldn't even care less 
or even skeptical and defiant, those who are not serious seekers or just the surface seekers whose hearts have waxed gross, ears are tired of hearing the message week in, week out, day in, day out, they've shut their eyes. Blessed are your eyes and ears when they're able to see and hear. As many prophets and righteous people have desired to see those things which you've had the privilege of. Now, those of us who, um, many of us who we know the truth, but it's only had knowledge, not in our heart, not in our spirit, not in our actions. Don't allow, not allowing the, lo- the word to change our hearts for our healing and salvation. And as you know, salvation is an individual matter and not saved by our families or our churches that we go to. And so we look at the parable of the sower. Jesus said uh, he had to go out to, uh, to the water, to the lake, and so that everybody could hear him, as you can see there, to be uh, able to um, speak these parables that he had. So the parables uh, will be taken from the books of Matthew chapter 13, and there are also uh, parallels in the book of Mark chapter 4 and the book of Luke chapter 8. So three books, and we'll be just studying the similarities and the slight subtle differences between these parables that we can learn something from them. Matthew 13, as I continue to read this parable of the sower, Same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went to a ship, as we saw earlier, and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the straw. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And as you know, some fell by the wayside. Birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, didn't have much earth, and Straight away they sprung up, but because they had no deepness of earth, when the sun came up, they were scorched, because they had no roots, and they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear is Jesus' admonishment to us in these parables. So what are some of the lessons that you can learn from the parable of the sower as covered in the book of Mark chapter 13, sorry, Matthew chapter 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8? Let's start with those that fell on the wayside. In the book of Matthew, it summarizes it by saying, these are those who hear the word not understanding it, the wicked one comes, takes, takes away that which was sown in the heart. The book of Mark continues on to say, they have heard, but they allow the devil to immediately take away the word that was sown in their hearts. Similarly, in the book of Luke, who admonishes us to you is given them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand, as Isaiah had said many years before. And so the seed that was being harvested, Luke um, tells us that this is the word of God. And on the wayside is they that hear, but allow the devil to immediately take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Personally, I think this uh, applies, because when we look at these uh, parables, we should be thinking, where, which of these categories do I fall in? Sometimes I fall in one of those categories, another time, and another one. And we should really be uh, searching our hearts and thinking as we um, go through these parables. So this first one, I would say, these are the skeptics who immediately uh, reject any inkling of God's word. And let's look at the one that fell on the stony places or the stony ground, or the rock, according to the different book that you read. Matthew, he continues and says, These are they that hear the word, receiving it with joy, yet having no root, endure for a while. But when trials and persecution arises because of the word, 
they are offended. Mark says similarly the same thing. They immediately receive it with gladness, but endure for a while, and affliction of persecution arises. For the word's sake, immediately they are offended. In Luke, similar sentiments. Having no root, they believe, but when facing temptations, they fall away. I absolutely believe those are those who are remorseful, maybe at first after hearing the word, but not being grounded or showing no sincere desire to change, they fall when facing temptation. And the third one, the thorns. Book of Matthew says, these are those who hear the words, but they allow the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches to choke the word, become unfruitful. I myself fall in this category many times. I allow the business of this life, the business of this world and the stresses and the things that we face on a daily basis to choke the word from me. In Mark, he says, those who hear the word, however, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the last of the things enter in and choke the word, and they become unfruitful. Luke as well, similar sentiments, and he adds on to the cares and riches and the pleasures of this life having only a partial bearing of fruits and bringing no fruit to perfection. And lastly, was the good and the soft ground. And Matthew says, these are they who hear the word, understand it, and bear fruit. 160 and 30 times. Mark, similarly, 30, 60, 100 times. In Luke, he adds further, with an honest and a good heart. These are people who have heard the word, they have kept it in their hearts, and they bear fruits with patience. I think that is a, a really key word that Luke added at the back. We need a lot of patience in our lives in order to be bearing one of the fruits of the Spirit. And as we learn of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, love, as we all know, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, we all know this, meekness and temperance. Crucify the, 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 those who have crucified their flesh, not desiring vainglory, not provoking one another, not envying one another. And it further adds, as you read on, most of us just stop here. If one is overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore that person with meekness, Concealing yourself that you may not be tempted, bearing each other's burdens, not thinking highly of yourself when we are nothing. Be not deceived that God is not mocked whatsoever a person sows, that also is what you reap. Sow to the flesh, you are reap corruption. Sow to the spirit, reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in this season we shall reap an opportunity arises, let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. And also there are other Matthew 13 parables talking about the weed, or the weeds where the planters, that's Jesus showing good seed, the children of the kingdom in the field, which is the world, while men slept, an enemy came, the devil, and sowed weeds, children of the wicked one, amongst the wheat, and then Jesus says, let bo both grow together until the harvest or the end of the world. When the tares are gathered by the reapers or the angels and burn and the wheat is stored in the barn. Also, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a mustard seed, though it's very small, as you can see there on the screen, it grows to become one of a mighty, um, huge tree that has big branches that even birds are able to take shelter in its branches. Another uh, parable was the hidden treasure. In these uh, parables, there are three of them he put together. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, there was one of the hidden treasure. As you all know, this person, the um, kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure that is hid in a field. When the buyer finds it, he hides it, selling everything that he has in order to buy that field. 
this is how much we should be um, desiring and seeking after God's word in our hearts. It's also like in the kingdom of heaven to the pearl of great price, where the same thing, the person who found his soul or to buy it. And kingdom of heaven, it's also likened to a net. And this is a different concept here. Uh, in this instance, it's separating the good from the bad. So shall it be in the end of the world, where angels will separate the wicked from the just and cast them into the fire. Now, after seeing all these parables in the book, uh, Matthew 13, in the end, towards the end of Matthew chapter 13, Jesus gets rejected at Nazareth, his own country. With you offended, saying, isn't this the carpenter's son? His mother is just Mary, the ordinary woman. Um, his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where and how could he have learned all these things and do these mighty works? So Jesus had to depart his own country, his own house, because of the unbelief. Luke 18, verse 8, Jesus, uh, looking forward to the ages, said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. These are lyrics from this song from this young lady in um, Alice Springs, which I think has a lot of uh, lessons for us to learn. And she goes on to say, come to the altar. We wear our best clothes. We put on a show. Just get comfortable. It's all about us. Come to our creator. We come and praise him. Maybe an hour. Then we're done. We pack him all up, stuff him in the corner. And then we sing about Jesus. We sing of his love. Sing of the life that he gave us. But heaven forbid that God would have the nerve to ask us to give our own lives. She continues as she finishes off. Because how can we follow Christ only when it's convenient? How can we worship a God that we don't even know? Open his word for a moment or two. Take what you like and leave what you don't. Tell me how, she ponders. Tell me how. How can we die for something unless we live for it each day along the way? This is not a game. And stop playing games. <clears throat> are you here or are you there? Are you hot or are you cold? As we know in the book of Revelation chapter 13, that the, the church we're living in nowadays, it's a Laodicean church. It's a lukewarm church. Jesus says he knows our works and um, that we are neither hot nor cold, but rather he would prefer to either be hot or cold. And so because of our condition that we are in, in lukewarmness, these are some terrible words that Jesus has spoken. He will spew thee out of my mouth. And we say we are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, but we do not know that we are the opposite. Continues on to say, counseling us to buy gold tried in the fire, or in other words, faith, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, or the, his white raiment of robe of righteousness, that we may be clothed our nakedness with. For anoint our eyes with eyes salve, talking about the Holy Spirit, so that we may be able to see. And I think the admonishment that we really should pay attention to is in verse 19. As many as Jesus loves, he tells us, he rebukes and he chastens us. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He stands at the door and is knocking in our hearts. The book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 13, there was an event of this young ruler who comes to Jesus. And he asked him questions, and his question was, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asks him another question. How readest thou, or how do you interpret those words? And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And with all your mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. This leads up to the story of the Good Samaritan. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, 
these two, and you shall live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And as we know the story very well, which of these three were his neighbors? Who is his neighbor? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. So Jesus says, Go and do likewise. So our neighbors are those, I think, particularly those that we don't get, often get along well with, um, doing good to them and not repaying evil for evil. Self-reflection questions that I can um, gather from after reading all this. First is, do we take offense at the word of God as it teaches us? And on the other hand, do we take offense easily towards others in our daily conversations as you converse? Do we take time to reflect upon his word as we read the scriptures? Do we take time to reflect upon the Sabbath school lessons, the sermons after each Sabbath? Or do we just routinely um, carry on with life? Is the lessons and sermons being conveniently shoved to the side as we resume our daily grind of life? Are we questioning ourselves, our motives, our hearts? Is it right with God? Are we living testimonies of the word? In obedience, living out the life, the fruits of the spirit, filling our minds with things that are true, honest, just, and pure. It's given Philippians 4, 8. Lovely and of good report. Is the Bible like a precious treasure to us? Something that we look forward to reading as we discover hidden layers of treasures. Do we look forward to the church service, to the Sabbath school, to the sermons, or the fellowship, to the prayer meetings? It reminds me of... Um, our Friday prayer meetings, something that really important in the last two weeks is the lovely uh, donuts that Selena makes for us. Uh, sometimes we now have our potluck uh, lunches. Jenny makes these wonderful pumpkin soups. Or Sally making these wonderful sandwiches, which I always give and I am ready to um, consume it. And the vegetable rolls, I don't know who makes them. They're so lovely. Things like that, desserts, something that attracts you, that wants you to go... Um, and attend and listen to his words, things that uh, drive us closer to God. And just like as I was sharing with Adam, sharing with us uh, a happy Sabbath message every Sabbath from last week to this week, it's just something that, that encourages us. It gives us that hope and, and something that we look forward in anticipation to the next Sabbath. And there's these beautiful song lyrics by um, Gaitha, I think you know very well. Um, something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. Something beautiful is a wonderful reminder of Bill and Gloria about how God can take all our dreams and hopes which have crumbled into ashes and turn them into something even better and more beautiful. And she shares the story of her oldest child, Suzanne. One day she was painting, and she spilled some paint. She tried to clean up the mess, and she told Gloria, Oh, Mommy, I tried to make you something beautiful, but just look, I dropped some paint. She heaved and caught her breath. I tried to fix it, but it just got worse. And now just look at the mess I've made. From there, the idea formed about how God can transform our lives and our mess that our heart is in. How has the Lord turned the brokenness and strife in your life into something beautiful? That's where God allows us to have trials. That it's like a fire that purifies us, taking away the dross, the imperfections. It's a slow and a lifetime process, needing a lot of patience, endurance, overcoming, faith, dependence, trust, repentance, humility, needing a lot of obedience and gratitude and confession. Are we willing to fall on the rock? Are we willing to admit our failures, our wrong persuasions, our opinions? Are we ready to forgive and let go, to reconcile and heal, to unite and move forward? Are we willing to yield to God's spirit, to mold and to shape us, to change our stony hearts to hearts of flesh, 
that is receptive, submissive, obedient, and desiring to do good, like the good soil, to right the wrongs that we do. What are some of the reasons that you come to church for? Is it to allow God's Spirit to mold us every week, to change us from the inside, that we live transformed, that we grow daily, inviting His Spirit's presence into our lives first thing in the morning, to be recharged, reflecting, to reassess our lives, realign our lives in conformity to His will, being partakers of the divine nature, growing into perfection on a daily basis, becoming the best of what we could become each day through His strength. On the other hand, maybe we're just here on a routine basis, just to socialize, make us feel good, we're doing the right thing by attending church, just read the Bible, sing a few hymns, listen to the sermons, pay tithes and offerings, say happy Sabbath, and then back to our normally weekly and daily routine. No real heart transformation takes place. No heartfelt contrition takes place. Then we have lost the true meaning of coming together in church. Our greatest need, as you all know, is God's word and his Holy Spirit in us to help us overcome the sins and the weaknesses in our lives, to lead us into all truth in John chapter 16, to give us comfort. Holy Spirit is to guide, to give us discernment, to purify our hearts and minds, to give us the sense of purpose, and deliberateness in our lives, which is eternal life, heaven that we should be looking forward to. Quickly going over Romans 12 too, which I know you all know very well in the book of Romans chapter 12. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, not to think of himself more highly, having then gifts differing according to the spirit, to the grace that is given us. We have different gifts that we can all put together for God in our church. Gifts of teaching, gifts of teaching, of prophesying, of faith, or one that encourages with diligence, showing mercy and cheerfulness. Marks of the true Christian, as Paul carries on with Romans chapter 12, verse 9 onwards, let love be without dissimulation, making no differences between others. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayers, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Referring back to Jesus' sermon on the mount. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Live peaceably if it be possible. There's life in you with all men. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Just lately we had a one week of uh, prayer. I'd just like to share uh, some of uh, the introduction that our president of our conference, Ted Wilson, used in his introduction to the theme, I will go and share God's word. We are a privileged nation, uh, generation, sorry. We have access to technology we easily uh, can search through scriptures quickly. Um, in Christ's time, they didn't even have the New Testament. They only had the Old Testament. Uh, we have the spirit of prophecy, interpretation of prophecies. We have the uh, prophecy seminars. Um, we can um, reformat our presentations in many other formats that we can uh, to be able to make the content of the message clearer to us. But the danger is in these new technologies that we have we get too comfortable. Uh, age of convenience, uh, it's all press button, and there's a danger to that that uh, we don't really uh, try to wake up early, to pray in the morning, uh, to pray in the evening. And uh, here is where we need um, a guide or a benchmark. And uh, God's word, as uh, Ted uh, explains in his introduction to the one week of prayer, will act as a benchmark for us, as a foundation uh, given in the parable of the wise man and the foolish man, the wise man who built his house upon the rock. 
to be able to differentiate between truth and error, uh, to be able to know between misinformation, which is ignorance, and disinformation, which is deliberate, to deceive, to mislead, to give you propaganda and control. These are the tools that we need nowadays as we navigate our way through this te technological age that we live in. The modern uh, analogy of um, parables nowadays, uh, as Jesus used in those days, nowadays we, we can compare his word to, like we mentioned before, like GPS, with the modern car technology that we have, the modern conveniences, we have driver assist mode, we have lane assist, we have collision detection alert, we have 360 degree cameras, all these analogies we can relate to the word and to the Holy Spirit to guide, it's there to guide and to uh, lead us and to show us the way, to show us the destination we're going to, to monitor our present situation and to assess how we're doing and where are we going. And as, as we begin to close uh, this presentation, um, how do we begin to um, develop an attachment to reading scriptures? How do we invoke this interest, especially with the young people or with the modern day that we live in, to be able to have an interest in reading God's word, to be able to sit down and, and ask for his Holy Spirit's presence in your life? So we have um, apps nowadays, as we know. Um, we have a Faith FM. In fact, we have our own Faith FM, a Faith FM here in church to uh, create our own content. And um, as we finish reading, um, those are uh, texts from the one week of prayer which I believe you've all read the last quote there is uh, from the uh, fundamental faith uh, scripture old and new scriptures are the written word of God and given by divine inspiration the, the, the inspired authors spoke and wrote as they were moved by his spirit and in this word God has committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation the Holy Scriptures are the supreme, authoritative, and the infallible revelation of his will. So as we finish off, um, I'd like us to explore a few avenues that um, can help us to be able to invoke an interest and to make use of the readily available resources like the Faith FM that we have. As you open up the Faith FM uh, website, that is uh, what you get. And... Um, on the right there is a testimony by one of the people, I think he's a farmer, and uh, he's been inspired by the Faith FM. And he said, I stumbled across Faith FM while driving my tractor. God used Faith FM to change my life. Now I help by establishing new Faith FM repeater stations so others can be blessed as I have been. That's the app, if you open it up. And uh, there are many... Um, useful uh, features inside Faith FM. You can go through the podcasts, you can go through the Bible studies, you can go through the uh, things for kids, devotionals, for health, interviews, live programs, music, sermons, special events. I think these are things that we need to be filling our minds with in the days that we're living in and uh, get drawing us close to his word. It even talks about financial things and programs that are local to the Australian environment, uh, scripture songs that can help us to be, remember God's words. Uh, lately we had Candice, and I forgot the other lady who came to uh, share with us about this concept called phototheology, a study of the Bible using images. And also we have our own uh, spirit of prophecy writings as you open up the app, that is how, how it looks. There are many books that you can share you can come and see uh, any one of us for you are, um, who are older, if you need help in these apps, we can help you with them. They are illustrated in colorful books. As you can see, some of those books there are very familiar uh, headings that we can use to be able to have a fair understanding of God's words, counsel for the churches, health, diet and food, early writings, Confrontational is an interesting one, as this was what Candy shared with us to do with um, spiritual warfare that uh, we face each and every day. Uh, it's just a recent compilation. Uh, the Great Controversy, Testimonies and Treasures, uh, and um, 
simplified versions of the books of the Greek controversy in these other ages, they have been condensed and made simpler. You can get all this through the EGYR state apps, to making an understanding of God's word that may be clearer to you, to be able to navigate through this life. There's, there's, there's a lot out there. Um, you can have, you can, if, you want to, if you want to know how to access, you can see me or see anybody else in church who are familiar with um, with these apps. So I'd like to close off by a Bible verse today um, to show us that the kind of uh, heart that God is after, Psalms 34, 18. God is after those that are of a broken heart and those of a contrite spirit. It reminds me of the prayer between the Pharisee and the tax collector. If you remember how these two went up to the temple to pray, one was a Pharisee, the other a publican. It's found in Luke chapter 18. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not like the other, um, extortionist, unjust, adulterous, even as this publican here. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not as much lift up his eyes into heaven but he smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus says, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. May God bless you with his words that he may transform our hearts and minds and that we conform to his will. Amen. We have the privilege now of singing our final hymn, 625, Higher Ground, which uplifts our minds to the Lord and his word to put it part of our life as we've been asked to do today. 625.
Lord, please be with us as we depart today. May your spirit guide us and transform our hearts and lives, Lord, that we may um, act to your will, Lord, and be repentful uh, while we still have time, Lord. We thank you and we ask all this in your precious name. Amen.